Yeah, good morning everyone. Uh, good morning especially to the uh, people who are um, staying with us online. Um, I say already good morning to everyone here. Um, well, I, first of all I want to thank you very much Evelyn for, for organizing this event and for um, making it possible that it was here in, in Madrid. I have been following uh, the work of Evelyn since uh, 2006, uh, when she wrote the book uh, Making Enemies, um, even a little bit earlier, I think, I already saw uh, or read some of uh, her articles about um, the, the um, genocide in Rwanda. And, well, for me, it has been always uh, a very strong, uh, inspiring source uh, to, to think. About, to think about um, the meaning of humiliation and dignity. So it, her work uh, for me has been absolutely cru crucial. I, I am a social psychologist um, and I study uh, from the beginning of my, my research efforts um, humiliation. I was interested in humiliation in social psychology like in 2003-2004 there, there were almost no uh, research uh, published about humiliation, which was very surprising because it's a, such a strong uh, psychosocial phenomenon that I was astonished that there was not uh, much research. So, well, I, I began to study humiliation uh, at that time and together with my mentor, uh, uh, Professor Francisco Morales, who is uh, already retired, and uh, cannot be here, uh, unfortunately, because it, uh, he will have a lot to say about this. And, and we began together to, to deepen in the, in the study of humiliation, and because there was no social, uh, there were not uh, uh, academic literature on that, we, we uh, studied from the perspective of social stigma and, uh, and social exclusion. And then we wanted to reach a collective, a group of people here in Spain from, which, from whose experience we could understand better uh, the psychological experience of, uh, of being humiliated and how, one, how, how, how people who, who suffer humiliation can cope with it. And we saw a movie uh, called Station Island uh, which was uh, the main character was Peter Dinkel, Dinklage. I think it's Peter Dinklage. But he's, he's a very famous actor who has achondroplasia, which is the the most uh, common form of uh, of dwarfism, short short stature. And when I saw that movie, I realized that this group, the people uh, with achondroplasia, was a very important group to research in order to understand humiliation. So I, uh, together with Paco, we contacted uh, the Alpe Foundation, which I, I invite you to search in the website for the Alpe Foundation, which is nowadays, I think, one of the biggest organizations in the world that uh, provide help and service to families who have a member with uh, achondroplasia and other skeletal dysplasias that cause uh, dwarfies or, or, or unproportional short stature. And from that point, my work was very, well, was enriched very much from that contact with uh, the people with achondroplasia because they, they needed that social psychologists uh, study and, and uh, put uh, black in, on white, uh, on written, what are all the impact that, uh, what is the impact that they uh, encounters uh, with others that sometimes, not always of course, but sometimes are very threatening and humiliated um, are. They, they wanted us to, to study that and to, and to uh, document that and to study that from a psychological point of view. And we, so we make a, like a joint, uh, a, a, a joint venture there of uh, research. And we have been working together since then. Well, uh, during that journey, I realized that 
in order to understand humiliation, I think there are many us, I think we are in many kinds of humiliation possible, but in order to understand the humiliation that one suffers because of having a stigmatized uh, apparent, physical appearance, the best thing is to listen to the people who experience that in everyday life. I learn a lot from, from those, and I also have been have witnessed the huge uh, progress on how many things this organization collectively as a group we, are, we, we, we already talked about community you know, the first day how strong was the power of this community even it's a, a very small community in terms of numbers which uh, little influence uh, which is one of the main problems even though when they got together in this organization they have achieved to modify social structures that are uh, very deep uh, into, the, into our collective uh, mentality uh, and they have dignified in many sense the group of people with orphans and one of the persons who has hack, who can uh, <coughs> document or tell us more about us is my very good friend Felipe or with who is, who is going to make the presentation. I'm not going to make the presentation, I'm going to translate the words that Felipe is going to, to tell us. Um, Felipe is... Felipe is a, a lawyer and a politician. Uh, and I... He is an abogado, a político, and I think an activist. And a social activist. <coughs> He's a very uh, highly uh, educated person with uh, two degrees uh, in law and in uh, political science. Uh, he worked for a big corporate, uh, energy corporate organization in the law department. And he has a very successful professional career. He's not a grande, he has a professional. But I think the most important thing. Those, those aspects, I think, are very important. Uh, I think the most important thing is that the work of the community is very important because it has a lot of benefits for the community. The most important thing is for today, I think, is the work he does as an activist for the people with the community. But I want to, to, to emphasize that being a, a successful lawyer in, in today's uh, competitive market, in his case, I think, is very, very important because he his father was a miner. Miner? Is he miner? He worked in, in the mines up there in the north of Spain in Asturias in a small village where he is still living. And well uh, to be able to get an education, a higher education coming from that uh, environment like uh, 40 years ago, it was not easy in Spain. So you have to be very strong, your family has to support you very much. And well he, he did it. He went out of the village to Salamanca, which is one of the best universities in Spain, and study there not only law but also a political science. And after that, he and I think well, people like me who doesn't have any physical disability or, or different, uh, or have a family who has resources, is for me it's very easy to do that. But not in this, you have to stand. But for people with this background and with the condition of the stigma is it talks about the character. But anyway, I think the most important thing anything Felipe will tell us today, I think it will be very, very interesting for this group. Anything. But I think he's going to focus political. What he's going to talk to us today is about the work that Alpe, the Alpe Foundation, uh, with his uh, very much involvement on it, has done in fighting against social stigma in Spain, but from a legal and a so, so changing, changing thing, changing law. Felipe always say, Felipe always say that you can only do politics if you have the control of the official. Uh, a state bulletin where the laws are written. If you don't change that, you don't change 
If you change that, you can change solution. So he's going to explain us the work that Alpha Foundation has done in that, in that direction. 